for a miracle yes faith in oh for a miracle yes faith in oh for a miracle yes faith in god for a miracle yes faith in oh for a Just have faith in God. Hallelujah. For a miracle. Yeah. Faith in God. For a miracle. Yeah. Faith in God. For a miracle. Yeah. Faith in God. For a miracle. Just raise your faith before God. Hallelujah. Faith in God. For a miracle. Have faith in God. Hallelujah. Faith in God. For a miracle. Yeah. Faith in God. For a miracle. Yeah. Faith in God. For a miracle. Miracle, yeah, faith in God for a miracle, yeah, faith in God for a miracle, yeah, faith in God for a miracle, yeah, in God for a miracle. Father, we want to thank you. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We say, God, can you increase as we increase today? We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. We may take our seats. Hallelujah. Our God is a very good God. Uh, we really want to thank God for, for your coming. We thank God for what he is doing in our lives. Uh, we had powerful testimonies. Uh, God is doing great things in our lives. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's just turn our Bibles from the book of Matthew chapter 13 from uh, verse 33. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to continue. My message is the same, the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Last time we were talking about the kingdom of God being like a seed, like a mustard seed. You know, when it is planted, it grows. Then I was saying, when we have this kingdom, it's a, it's a kingdom that moves. It's a kingdom that when you plant it, it, uh, it produces fruits. When you plant it, it, it grows. When you plant it, people look at you and they enjoy the fruits. I was saying the kingdom is like, it's like a movement. It doesn't stay stagnant, but it moves to another level. Hallelujah. It moves to another level. So it was already after hours. Then Pastor Dumi asked me, he said, how are we going to enter? We said we're going to enter because of the kingdom of God. Amen. So when we're at the gate there... Uh, the, the police was there and the gateway closed. For sure, 10 p.m., nowhere to go in. Then uh, another medical doctor was coming out. Then it was a way for us to go in. Then the policeman looked at us. He said, I guess you are pastors. You can go ahead and pray. Hallelujah. So what we are saying is, there is a time whereby you need to release the kingdom of God. Amen. Wherever you are, you need to know that I am a child of God. There are some situations whereby you need to talk and release the kingdom of God and say, by God's kingdom, I'm going to conquer. Hallelujah. Yes, of course, we might go through some problems. 
You see, on, on Friday, I was just giving an example. I would say it in Shona, then I would say it in English. Someone who, who, someone who interpret it in, 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 in English. Because I heard the voice in Shona. So I don't know how to put it in English. Amen. <laughs> so uh, those who know English, you can stand up. Where are the teachers? Amen. Now you can stand up and volunteer too. So when I was praying here in the mo- in the on Friday, I told the church. I said, uh, uh, "Where is my interpreter?" <laughs> 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 Where is my interpreter? Uh, okay, you are okay. <laughs> all right, all right. I said the Holy Spirit was saying, "Kwandiri kuti pane mago anokuruma nekuti wazidenera." There are some wasps that will bite you when you uh, when you trouble them. Ah uh, no, that's not the right one. Can I have another one? <laughs> <laughs> Can I have another one? When you provoke them, when you provoke them, yes. <laughs> okay. Or agitate them, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that right? Yes. Uh, provoke, provocation. I, you favor this guy, I don't think. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then goes where magwa no kuruma because God is training you. And then there will come some wasps that will bite you because. God is training you. So what we are seeing, it, it, it actually became so clear to me that there are things that we go through because it's us who are agitating Margo. <laughs> Hallelujah. And there are things that we go through it because God is training us to another level. Amen. So this kingdom that we are talking about, it's not just a kingdom whereby you are going to see everything smooth. It's not a kingdom whereby everything is just going to be sunny, cloudy night. But it's a kingdom whereby most of the time you are going to be tried. Hallelujah. You know, this week I was just talking with someone. I said, how do I know that you are a good elder? I said, I only know that you are a good elder when somebody comes and pinches you. And I looked at your face and I see your reaction. When your reaction is full of grace, then you have qualified to be an elder. (laughs) Hallelujah. Do you know that people can just pinch you without any reason? Hallelujah. So how do I know that you are a good Christian? How do I know that you are a mature Christian? Uh, There are some punches that comes when you are not ready. Hallelujah. So you are qualified when your face is full of grace. When your face is full of amen. Hallelujah. Uh, We are talking of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So the kingdom of God is not easy. It is a kingdom that is identified by the things that we go through. It is the kingdom that is identified by the problems or the things that makes us who we are in the Lord. I wish everyone was writing because when I teach, by the way, this is my last sermon. Uh, I want you to, to grab it next week by God's grace. We'll be having, uh, a, if things goes well, uh, Overseer Mashushire will be in the house. He will be preaching here next week. Uh, hallelujah. If not him, we have our guest speaker all the way from UK. So next week we'll be having uh, guest speakers here. Hallelujah. So who is going to read? Matthew chapter 13, verse 33. Amen and amen. Another parable he spoke to them. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was all leavened. Hallelujah. Another version says yeast. Today, I'm going to talk about the kingdom like yeast. Last time, we're talking about the the verse after that, verse 32. It talks of the seed. You know, uh, master seed. The master seed, that's the same seed that we used to make what? To to make bread. Now, we are now on verse 33 now. The Bible now talks of the kingdom of God is like yeast. 
Now, when you see the comparison on chapter uh, verse 32, the Bible talks of the seed. Now, it's now talking of the yeast. When you put these things together, you see that the kingdom of God requires you to be humble. Amen. For, 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 for the seed, in order for it to grow, in order for it to germinate, you have to put it under the ground first. The hard conditions. For it to grow, for it to what? To germinate. Now, here now on verse 33 now, the Bible now is giving us an example of the kingdom of God is like yeast. You know, I, I, I like one thing about yeast, or I don't like one thing about yeast, is when you look at yeast, there's nothing that you can admire on yeast. It's something that you look at it, you just say, this thing doesn't even work. But the yeast cannot work when it is packaged. It can only work when you release and when you, when you mix it with, uh, with something. Then when you mix it with bread, then it, the bread will start to what? Will start to change its, uh, its color, uh, the, uh, you know, the way it is and all that. We, we, we explain more on that. Now, when we are talking of the kingdom, last time we said, there are two kinds of kingdom. The kingdom of this world and the kingdom of God. Now when we receive Christ as our personal savior, the kingdom of God is now ruling in our hearts according to the word of God. So when it is ruling in our hearts, what we need to do now is we need to speak the word of God like our teacher was teaching us this morning in order for the kingdom of God to work in our lives, we need to continuously speak the word of God, release the king, uh, the word. When we release the, uh, the, the word through the kingdom, then things will start to manifest in our lives. Now, when we are speaking the word of God, it doesn't mean that things will come to pass there and there. There are things that will take time. Hallelujah. That's why on verse 32, when we're talking of the, the seed, the seed, when you put it on the ground, it doesn't germinate the same day. Some other seeds, they take time. Some other seeds, they take some days. But whatever, what we know is that seed one day, it will germinate. So it is now in the process of waiting for that seed to germinate. That matters a lot. Hallelujah. When you are waiting, are you patient enough? Hallelujah. Are you patient enough? You rem uh, I don't know some of you, but some of us who grew up in rural areas, you know, you could take a mango, maybe we would go to a school and steal some mangoes, and uh, you could put it under the, the, under the, the soil so that it can, what, it, it can ripe or something like that. But because you want to eat it, after a day you want to check, to make sure, <laughs> uh, some of you can relate, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. After a day or a purple, you know, you, you think that it's already turned from uh, green to, to yellow already. You, you continue to check. But when you do that, you are actually <laughs> misusing the, uh, the process. You need to leave it there for some days until you see the yellow coming. Hallelujah. So the kingdom of God, we need to seek it. By waiting patiently before God. Before, be, because God, he knows when. Hallelujah. So, the yeast is a small beginning. Hallelujah. When you look at it, there is nothing that you admire. You looked at Jesus Christ, there was nothing that you could admire on Jesus Christ. But Jesus, when he came, he came to fulfill that which he was sent by his father to come and do it uh, on this earth. But it actually grew gradually because people were not understanding him. People were not understanding what is going on. But the kingdom continued to grow. Hallelujah. So the kingdom grows. So when you look at the east, there's nothing that you can admire. So in the things of God, the things that we think that they are nothing, those are the things that can elevate us to another level. Hallelujah. Do you know that sometimes prayer, we might think it's not important, but prayer is the one that can elevate us to another level. 
Do you know that sometimes we might think giving is not important? Reading the word of God is not important? Obedience is not important? Those things, when you put them together, they are just like useless. But in the kingdom of God, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. The yeast now, when you mix it, it becomes invisible. You don't see whether I have mixed the yeast. Where is the yeast? You try to look it with your ordinary eyes. Maybe that's when we need those, uh, uh, those scientists. They have to put their machines to see how it's reacting in there. But with your ordinary eyes, you will not be able to see how the yeast is reacting when it is mixed with food. That's the same thing with this kind of kingdom. The kingdom of God is invisible. You cannot touch, go around and touch, touch, touch the kingdom of God. You can only sense and touch the kingdom of God when you are in the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. When we have the spirit of God within us, when, we, when God baptizes us with his spirit, now we can now understand, we can trigger the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I said I'm going to give you some examples. So I'll be, I'll be picking up a, lot, a few people here. So this, was it last year? I was just talking with Mr. Sarawaka. He wanted to do his master's. Uh, it was around 11. He can correct, correct me, 11 p.m. or something. I googled this university. I said, Sarawaka, early in the morning, I want you to call this university. You have a place at this university. For sure, I think he went to that university the following day. He got the place without the transcript. <laughs> I mean, what I'm trying to say is, the university says you have to bring the transcript. But in the kingdom of God, when we release, you get your place without the transcript. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What we are trying to say is, the university was supposed to say, Sarawaka, bring your transcript all the way from Zimbabwe. But schools were about to start. But we had to release the kingdom of God and say, Sarawaka, you have the place right there. He graduated, no transcript. Hallelujah. So what we are saying is, there are some moments whereby we have to release the kingdom of God. Amen and amen and amen. We have just to release the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Some of you, you are getting papers in less than three months. What's that? We are releasing the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. We are releasing the kingdom of God. Ah. That's why our father is saying, we need to understand this kingdom. Even though when you are going through problems, don't undermine yourself and say, I don't think I'm a child of God. I don't think things will go well with, with me. Continue confessing the kingdom of God. Speak the kingdom of God. Things going to happen in your life. Hallelujah. Ah. Hallelujah. Then Matthew chapter 5 verse 3. The Bible now says, blessed are the poor in the spirit. For there is the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. So in order for us to maintain this kingdom of God, we need to be continuously poor in our spirit. When the Bible says that those who are poor in the spirit, it means there are some who are rich in the spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. When you are rich in the spirit, you don't read the word of God because you are rich. Hallelujah. When you are rich in the spirit, it means you are no longer fasting. Why? Because you feel rich spiritually. <laughs> Hallelujah. You no longer do the things of God. Why? Because you feel rich spiritually. But the Bible here is saying, blessed is he who is poor in the spirit. Poor means... We have to continuously search the things of God. No matter what we are going through, we have to continuously search the things of God. Hallelujah. I always say to people, it's not about the places, but it's about, are you at the right place with God? You can travel many places that you want, but as long as you are not connected with the blesser, <laughs> You still sing the songs of blessings and you still remain the same. But are you connected?
connected with the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Let's speak the kingdom of God. Let's speak the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 5 verse 17. We are now seeing Jesus. Now he's saying, I have come to fulfill. Hallelujah. To fulfill the law. I want to say to you, ladies and gentlemen, when you are in the Lord, you are already full with the things of God. God has already fulfilled your dreams. Whatever you are going through, let it not stop you. The Lord already fulfilled your dreams through Jesus Christ. Amen. Ah, hallelujah. Now we go to another characteristics of uh, yeast. Yeast, when you mix it with food, it changes the shape of the food. Hallelujah. Even when the shape, when it is small, because the yeast is applied, the food doesn't have any choice. It has to change the shape. I want to say to us, ladies and gentlemen, when we are in this kingdom, when we apply this kingdom, no matter what kind of a situation that you are going through, it has to change the shape according to the kingdom of God. God has to, to reshape the things that you are going through. Why? Because I have the kingdom of God. Don't allow the devil to reshape and reshape your problems and, uh, until you know the type of a shape of your problem. But because of God, let me see my problem through the reshaping of my God. Hallelujah. So that's what the yeast does. It doesn't care how big it is, how small it is. When you mix the yeast, something is going to happen. But I like something. It's so quiet. It doesn't make noise. <laughs> In the kingdom of God, don't make a lot of noise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't make a lot of noise. Let the kingdom make noise on your behalf. <laughs> Hallelujah. What does it do? It changes the size. Not only that the appearance, it looks good. Not only that the test, it's very easy for you to say when you test uh, the bread and say, huh, there is, uh, th there is yeast here. Why? Because the yeast is starting to work. But as I have said, in order for the yeast to work, it has to be outside the package. In order for it to work. As long as we are not releasing the kingdom of God in our lives. The kingdom is not going to work. Hallelujah. But we want the kingdom that you experience by yourself. When you experience the kingdom of God. Then you are unstoppable. Hallelujah. You are unstoppable. Can you read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8. Why is uh, looking to that, into that? Uh, okay, you got it. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old yeast, nor with the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So here the Bible here is now saying, in other words, when I want to summarize this, is simply saying, in the Lord, don't be satisfied. The experience that you had last week, don't continue keeping that. Put the new yeast in your, in your package. Hallelujah. No matter how tasty your, your last week's bread was, don't continue with that last week test. God has got a better test for you each and every day. Hallelujah. That's why the Israelites, they wanted to keep yesterday's manna. They didn't realize that God has got better manna for them to, for today. Hallelujah. So no matter what type of test we go through, we test, we eat, we enjoy. Let's not stay in our yesterday's enjoyment but put new yeast in your life so that you can experience God's favor hallelujah Matthew 11 verse 30 the Bible now says 
carry my yoke. For my yoke is easy and light. Hallelujah. My yoke is easy and light. Why is it now the Bible at this time is talking of the yoke? Remember we said Jesus Christ came to fulfill the law. What was happening here is the Pharisees, in order for you to qualify to go for a Sabbath, they had more than 600 laws for you to qualify. So when Jesus was now looking at them, he was seeing a burden of yoke. They were going, but they were <laughs> carrying heavy stuff within them. Now Jesus now here is saying, carry my yoke. On Friday I was saying, what is the yoke of God? The yoke of God, why he is saying it's so easy? It's because it's a yoke which is full of joy. Full of love. Full of long suffering. You know, so the yoke of God is much easier. All right, let's go to Romans chapter 11, verse 33 to 36. We need to read a lot of uh, verses. Then Isaiah 40, verse 12. Let's start with Romans chapter 11, verse 33 to 36. How to maintain your kingdom. It's very, very important. All the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. <laughs> How unsearchable are his judgments. Hallelujah. Come on, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 12. Someone, someone, let's cruise. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? Who has measured, measured the waters? <laughs> That's how great the kingdom of God is. You don't have to be limited. Go ahead measure the heaven with a span and who can measure the heavens that's the kingdom that we live in hallelujah who can measure the waters if you can measure who can measure the heavens that's the kingdom that we are talking about in actual fact the things of god are unmeasurable if there is that word hallelujah unmeasurable there is no one who can measure the things of god so let us not measure the things of God by the things that we are going through. Hallelujah. It's unmeasurable. God has planned unmeasurable things for our lives. Hallelujah. So hang in there. Come on, let's go. And calculated the dust of the earth in a measure. <laughs> Hallelujah. And calculated the dust. Ah, this kingdom is great, man. Who can do that? Go ahead. Weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance. <laughs> the mountains. Hallelujah. We are talking of how great he is when we are talking of the mountains. Hallelujah. Psalms chapter 33 verse 11. Then we'll go again to Isaiah chapter 14, 27. Psalms 33 verse 11. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. Hallelujah. Can you repeat that one again? The counsel of the Lord stands forever. Forever, which means it's, you can't reverse it. It's already a done deal. It's already a done deal. You can't reverse it. Go ahead. And the plans of his heart. The plans of his heart. To all generations. Ah, hallelujah. The plans of God's heart, what are they? They are for all generations. What does it mean? It means that in your family, God has got plans for your family. But if you don't understand the kingdom of God, it's going to pass to another generation. That's what it means. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I don't want the blessings that I'm supposed to have because I don't understand the kingdom of God to pass to another generation. But I need to enjoy it now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't want just to be like 
the Old Testament prophets, whereby they were just pointing and pointing and pointing. But I don't want to point, but I want to experience the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. I like John the Baptist. Isaiah was pointing. Jeremiah was pointing. John the Baptist said, behold the man. Hallelujah. You have to behold the things of God. Amen and amen and amen. Let's go ahead. Did you read Isaiah 14, 27? All right. Let's cruise. Let's cruise. I just have a few minutes before I conclude. You say it, Isaiah 14? Yes. Verse 27. Say again the verse. 27, 14, 27. For the Lord of hosts is purposed, and who will annul it? His hand is stretched out. Which means, oh, go hold on, first part. His purpose, when he has got the purpose in his kingdom, no one can remove it. Hallelujah. The only person who can remove is called ignorance. Because we don't understand the kingdom of God, how it operates. There is no one who can be able to remove the purpose of God in my life. The only thing that can remove the purpose of God in my life is the ignorance that I have concerning the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. But when I understand the kingdom of God, then I understand that God does not repent when he gives me his purpose. Hallelujah. His purpose that he has given unto you is a purpose forever. He is not going to reverse it. So it's either you're going to speed it or you're going to slow it or it's not going to show up. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's either you're going to speed it, you're going to slow it, Oh, it's not going to show up. Hallelujah. Come on, let's go. His hand is stretched out. His hand is always stretched out. Go ahead. And who will turn it back? Who will turn it back? In the kingdom of God, it's already done a deal. A done deal that his hand was stretched forth towards your family. Towards your personal life. A, no human being can turn it back. Hallelujah. His hand is already stretched forth. Do you need healing today? His hand is already straight forth. What were you dreaming before that you are no longer seeing? His hand is already too late because it's already straight forth. So the discouragement cannot pull back God's hand. Whatever you are going through, it's already too late. It cannot pull back what he has purposed for your life. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you and say, you are somebody. You are somebody. Whatever you are going through, you are somebody. You can make it. Hallelujah. You can make it. You can make it. Create a good environment for you. It's going to come to pass. Hallelujah. Right. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Then John chapter 16 verse 33. For the word of God is living and powerful. Hallelujah. The word of God is living. So in the kingdom of God, if you want to live, release the word of God. When you don't release the word of God, then you will not live. Life in the kingdom is through the word of God. When we release the word of God, then you are going to live. <laughs> uh, hallelujah. You know, uh, last week, end of almost last week, man, I had a terrible, uh, my, my leg was so painful. I could not understand it. I could not move, really. I said, wow. Then, I came here in the church. I was standing there. I speak the kingdom of God. I said, God, this leg is going to move into nation, preaching the word of God. I haven't started yet. 
I'm going to fly into nations preaching the word of God. These legs in the name of Jesus Christ, they have to be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. I'll fly like my father from nation to nation preaching the word of God. It has to be healed in the name of Jesus. I just heard the noise. I thought I was broken. You know, sometimes you lack faith. I sat down, I said, oh, I think the devil just broke my leg. <laughs> you pray, you pray, you pray. But you hear a certain sound, you are already paralyzed. Sure, I was paralyzed. I said, oh, it's already broken. I didn't even want to test it. I thought I'm gone, you know. <laughs> so what I did was I had to, to scroll a little bit to go at the wall to make sure, you know. And I went like this, you know, there. Then I stood up little by little. You know, then I, I, I was like doubting Thomas. I put my finger, you know, I realized ha, it's not painful. Then I asked myself, yet I was praying, I said, what happened? <laughs> I'm saying it as it is. Human beings, I don't know why. I started to praise God here. I was totally healed. Hallelujah. I was totally healed. I'm saying to you in the kingdom of God, there are some moments whereby you need to release the kingdom of God and say enough is enough. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me give you another funny one. When I got my green card, because I was waiting for a long time to get a green card, I saw my green card. I said, ah, I think these are the people from another country who, 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 who send me this. So I went outside the country. When I was at the, at the airport, I was shivering. Is this a real green card? <laughs> uh, you know, is this real, a real green card? So when they said, welcome to America, I felt relieved. I said, ah, it's a green card. But you know what? God answered my prayers. The green card, I have it. I'm still doubting like Thomas. You know, so I'm saying to you, speak the word of God. Hallelujah. Speak the word of God. That's why some of you, when God answers your prayers, you can't even come here and testify. You just say in Shona Masaramus, you know, how do you say that in English? Hallelujah. <laughs> what do you, how do you say that? It's magic. <laughs> uh, not really magic. Masaramus is not magic. But anyway, <laughs> magic. <laughs> so I want to say to you, Whatever we are going through, don't just say it's magic. It's the kingdom of God that is taking over. Hallelujah. It's the kingdom of God that is taking over. 2016, when we were at Farmer's Branch, if you remember, I prophesied. I said, we are going to have weddings here. Even the single ladies are going to wed. Count it yourself. We have got more single ladies which are wedding. <laughs> I'm not going to go far. But <laughs> so, no, I'm not going to go deeper on that one. <laughs> but anyway, I just want to say to you, release the kingdom of God. Don't allow the environment to control you. Ah, hallelujah. You know, there are some people who are paralyzed by another human being. <laughs> Hallelujah. When this, uh, uh -huh, I'm seeing something. Some of you even at your working place. Because you heard someone talking bad about that company, about that manager, you already quit. It's a bad company, the manager, you already quit. You, you don't even know the manager. You don't even, you already quit. Stop quitting those jobs and release the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And release the kingdom of God. Oh, this professor, you will never pass. Ah, la, 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 you will never pass this one. Ah, ah, you know, <laughs> when I was doing my graduate school, I had this one. They said, this one, he trained at Harvard University. From there, he went to Oxford University. For you to pass this class, ah, you better change your major. <laughs> there are people who just want to discourage you. I didn't even know that professor, if I was going to listen to what they were saying, I was going to change. But I said, I continued speaking the kingdom of God. So I want to say to you, don't listen, don't be paralyzed by people. Paralyze them with the kingdom of God. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> From today on, when somebody tries to come and paralyze with negative things, paralyze them with the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. We have people who are a lot of paralyzed <laughs> because of what they said, what she said, what she's about to say, facial expressions and all that kind of stuff. Don't worry about that. Speak the kingdom of God. Speak the kingdom of God. When we are talking of the kingdom of God, we are not saying you are not going to face frowning faces. When we are saying we are talking of the kingdom of God, just after this powerful message, maybe you're going to receive a call somebody who is going to say his mind, like what they say here. What are you going to say? Your Christianity is going to be measured after hearing someone saying his peace of mind. And you answer by grace and say, I'm sorry. Hallelujah. Not waiting when he's talking peace of mind. You wait, you are already boiling and say, I can't wait to release my peace of mind. You are still far from the kingdom, brother. Hallelujah. God will not answer us. Hallelujah. But the kingdom of God, we are talking of the ones which are meek, the ones which are like yeast, the, which works quietly. Hallelujah. Quiet spirit is needed in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. All right. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 and 28. Whew, because of my time. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world. God has chosen the foolish things. When you look at the yeast, it looks foolish. But it is through that foolish when you understand the kingdom of God. Then it can trigger the blessings of God and put you to another level. It is not through the wise. It is through those things that the world says they are foolish. Through the foolishness, God triggers his uh, blessings. Hallelujah. Go ahead. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put shame to the wise. Hallelujah. Because of our time, we are not going to go ahead. Isaiah chapter 55 from verse 8 to 9. Isaiah 55 verse 8 to 9. Then Isaiah 40. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. When we look at the yeast, the other characteristics, it's not intimidated by size. No matter how big it is, when you mix the yeast, it has to make a change. Hallelujah. So I'm saying to us, as we are speaking the kingdom of God, yes, you might say, Pastor, the, king, the, the problem that I'm going uh, through is now a gigantic problem. It's now a big problem. But I want to say to you, the kingdom of God, come on, do you have now Isaiah chapter 55? Verse 9. Verse 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways. Your thoughts Lord. are not my thoughts. Hallelujah. Which means in this kingdom, we have what we call God's thoughts. Seeing things the way God is thinking or the way he is perusing them in his mind. So, in the kingdom of God, it's me putting my thoughts down, allowing God's thoughts to take over so that through his thoughts can create new things in my life. In my life. Hallelujah. So it is through God's thought or thoughts that can put me to another level in my spiritual realm. Hallelujah. Let's go. Let's go because of our time. Isaiah 40, 28. Do you have it? Yes, sir. Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. 
His understanding is unsearchable. Hallelujah. <laughs> because of time, I'm not going to finish the characteristics. His understanding is unsearchable. Hallelujah. Which means there is no one who can search and understand his understanding. Hallelujah. We are talking of a big kingdom here. So the kingdom of God that we have, it's not just a small thing. The kingdom of God that we are talking about here, it's not something that we can understand with our mind. But it's something that when we, we understand it through the reading of God, it's just a small fraction of his understanding that we can have. Because we cannot fully understand God. There is nobody who can fully understand God. So if we can't fully understand God, who are we to doubt him? Hallelujah. So I just want to encourage you this morning. I don't know what you are going through. But this thing that I know, as the word of God says, he already stretched forth his hand. Hallelujah. I don't know. Maybe you, you are about to give up. But I, I just want to encourage you today and say it's already too late. Why? Because God already stretched forth his hand towards you. Hallelujah. So I just want to say to you, as you'll be going to your working place this week, as you'll be working this week, I want you to see God's hand stretching forth towards you. Because it's already there. His blessings are already available. You just need to release them in your life. Hallelujah. So don't be discouraged. Continue pushing. Those who are at school, continue pushing. Those who are looking to do big in the, in the Lord, continue pushing. Don't be discouraged. We want to stand up. Hallelujah. You are great before God. Hallelujah. Don't allow discouragement to come through. Yes, sometimes we feel like I can't go any further. But know from today. His hand is already straight forth. Hallelujah. Just stretch your hand again to him and you will receive it. Hallelujah. I just want you to raise up your hands. As you are raising up your hands, I don't know what you are going through. God knows. Hallelujah. He knows what you are going through. Whether you need healing, whatever you need before God, God will do it. As I pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your people. This is your church, sanctified church. You have chosen them, the royal priesthood, the holy nation. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord, as people, as people we get discouraged most of the time. But, Father, we thank you for today's word that you have already straight forth your hand towards us. We thank you, Father. It is a hand of blessing. It is a hand of healing. It is a hand of encouraging us. Father, we thank you. Those who are looking for jobs, Father, we release jobs in the name of Jesus. We speak the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, who, those who need peace in their families, we speak uh, peace in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Whilst you are there, can we join our hands? We just want to pray uh, for Mr. Hove. He's not feeling well. Uh, I understand he woke up around four. He's been having a terrible headache.